Kimberly Walton, LaShondra Rayfield. Present. Katie McFadden. Present. Omar Salem. Present. Darlene Cannon. Here. Jane Grover. Carla Thomas. I'm here. So then we have a quorum. Great. Um, I the person from the round table, you just hit a cover, so there's no nobody else here looking to make any kind of comment. Just covering. Okay. So I'll just have my camera off, typing away. Okay. No problem. Um, so we don't have anybody wanting to make public comments. So we're gonna move right into the approval of the minutes from February, which was our last meeting. So um, go ahead. Oh yeah, I was just going to ask. So ask for a motion. Um, you mentioned that you were resisting learning the rules, so I don't know if I stepped in too early, but. And I'll I'll just do what Alejandra always does. Does Does anybody need an extra minute to review the minutes? Did you guys already have a chance to review them? Do we need extra minutes? Do we need some time? Nope. Okay. So, do we have a motion? I can move to approve. Thank you. I think that's the magic we needed. <laughs> we'll consider yeah, um, yeah, and then and I think just a voice vote um, is appropriate. So, um, I'll just all those in favor of approving the minutes. Aye. 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 Great. Okay. So the next thing we go into is a discussion of the YWCA stand against racism. Um, and Eileen, is that you? Yes. It, it is. And I, I want to ask one clarifying question. What is, is, is the April meeting a, an unusual date? There, I saw a date, it's a, is it on a Monday? Um, my understanding is that I did see somewhere that it was scheduled for Monday, but I think that was an error. I think um, the date was moved to accommodate a religious holiday, um, mm -hmm. Passover, I believe. Um, but it's just moving to the last Thursday of the month rather than the yeah, sure. third okay. Thursday. Thank you. All right, thank you for bringing it up. I was so surprised to see a Monday. I thought I must be crazy. So um, just to confirm, that is the 28th of April. Yes, it's actually in our calendars already. Perfect. <clears throat> I think it might be on the, uh, maybe it's on the city calendar as Monday or something. That, I don't know where I saw it, but um, so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Eileen Hogan Heineman from YWCA Evanston North Shore, where I've been working in the um, Equity Institute for as long as it's existed, which is the last three years, but prior to that, the racial justice program. And um, we have an event um, coming up at the end of April, which happens every year with um, sponsored by YWCA nationally. And um, it's called the Stand Against Racism, and it happens in lots of different ways. It can involve people, you know, organizations hosting a speaker or um, doing some kind of internal work. Um, more and more, that's what we're encouraging organizations to do some of their internal work and understand that that's how you stand against racism. Um, we have traditionally also done a physical stand. Um, up and down Ridge Avenue in Evanston and sometimes on Church Street near the high school. Um, and we, it also happens this year, fortunately for me, on a separate day in Skokie, so I don't have to run like a crazy person. But one of the things that we've spent a lot of time in the last two years talking about is how do we do things like this and not just have them be performative, you know, yay, we stood on Ridge and set signs and got people to beep at us and aren't we awesome? and there's no sense of change. There's nothing that's moving the needle on becoming a more anti-oppressive 
society, et cetera. And so we really are encouraging people this year to think about whether standing on Ridge or anywhere else is something that makes any sense for them. And for some, the answer will be no. And for some, it might be yes, because they've done some internal work or do some reflecting during the month of April about what's going on inside our institution or how are we helping the greater good of Evanston? Um, what are the specific things that we're doing? In part, we really want people to start holding themselves accountable to you know, really doing something. And the other part, and this is part of what's always been um, appealing about this, the physical stand is that sometimes other organizations that haven't started doing their work yet get some motivation out of, oh, oh, your, your company started looking at your job descriptions to be a more, to be, have a more, a wide open uh, applicant pool. We haven't thought about that as a way to address some of the lack of uh, diversity and inclusion that we, that we say that we believe in. And so really we're encouraging people to look at so many organizations have their equity statement and it does, it says nice words and it doesn't reflect anyhow with what they're doing. We're, so we're really encouraging lots of different ways of participating in the stand. In Evanston, we're, we'll be doing it um, actually on that same day as your next meeting, uh, April 28th, um, we'll be hosting a, a virtual, a physical stand outside. We also have um, a wonderful national speaker um, at noon on the 28th, and this is free and will be available to anybody um, via Zoom or Eventbrite or both of those. Uh, Loretta Ross, who is a fabulous activist, um, is really going to talk about um, allyship and accountability. And um, I think if you don't get to do anything else, participating in that is um, something that would be a really um, helpful way for your organizations, for the city to participate, you know, for the various um, places that you all work um, to participate. Um, and we, there's, a, there's a couple of other things that are possible. One thing that, um, that the Equity and Empowerment Commission might do, and I know you're gonna be talking about this in a bit, Carla, about the survey is, use this as an opportunity to say one of the things you all are doing to stand against racism is to really reach out to the entire city to get some answers about what is actually happening. We are happy to you know, provide publicity about that survey when it's ready to roll out um, in any of our you know, social media or newsletters that we send out because that's part of, part of what we do to support the efforts is to get people to know about them. Um, we also, if you're going to be, I, I know we're trying to be more sustainable, but if you're going to be doing um, paper copies, we'd be happy to be a spot where you could leave some if that's helpful. A lot of our swim families um, are people that might not necessarily um, be in some of the other social media, et cetera, outlets. Um, so we're going to encourage uh, we're going to encourage the city to participate in ways that literally make sense. I know that they've started again to talk about possibly doing uh, some professional development for the staff, and I I don't know that the budget contains any money for that to happen. And so as they're in budget season, thinking about how do you reflect those values that you say that you have with you know, including money in the budget so that employees can get the training that many so desperately need. Um, so that's that's something that we will be encouraging um, the the city to be um, to be addressing as well. But we wanted to be sure that people understood that we're really grappling with the question of how do we how do we really encourage people to do this work and simultaneously not encourage people to just stand on ridge and hold up a balloon or a poster and say that that's doing equity work just because they say I stand against racism. Um, so I, what I'd like to do is be able to send Matt um, an email with all of the various information and then you can share it with the commission um, and the commission can, you all can share it with whomever you want. Um, you know, the more the merrier, obviously. And if there's anything that you would like us to be doing to support the efforts of the of the commission, 
that's a role that we are really interested in playing in whatever way we can. Um, um, so that's basically my spiel. Spiel. Um, we want we want participation, but we really want thoughtful, um, action-centered participation. Um, and um, if you have any questions or thoughts or suggestions, or I know that some of you have participated in the past in different venues and some of you have not ever even seen it happen. So I'm ready to hear any ideas or thoughts from anybody. Um, thank you, Eileen. Um, I have personally broken my child out of school to go do it. Um, which, I kind of remember that happening. <laughs> because the school was refusing to let them out. So. We agreed and we escaped with a few kids, which, you know, while I agree with the performative nature, I think for kids, sometimes just seeing it is, 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 is helpful. So um, I kind of just want to open up the idea that, um, you know, for whatever it's worth, um, I'm not putting a whole lot of stuff behind it, but just, re, you know, regurgitating it that um, the mayor said to, well, at the time, Alejandra and I was part of this committee that, um, you know, if we make suggestions to him, he will take it far, which is not to say it'll get done or anything like that, but we do have this sort of open window to put forward suggestions. And I was wondering if anybody had like ideas um, about how the city, so not us as the, and it could be, it could be a call from us to other um, commissions as well, but like if we could put out a request, the city to sort of take part in this in some way. And I, I like the idea um, that I, Eileen, you mentioned um, that organizations may choose to participate by doing some internal work. Mm -hmm. So whether that means like the city, uh, we're asking the city to sort of break up, you know, like take two hours on that day and each department, whether it's the zoning department, like sit and, and, and work on, what they can do or something like that. But like, I was just, I, that was my brainstorm, but I'm gonna just open it up a little bit to see if they're brainstorms of, if people thought that the idea is we can suggest by the mayor and the city council um, of ways for the city to take part in this, in again, actionable ways as Eileen said. I'm going to tell you that I always wait to talk because I always talk, I tend to talk first. Um, and I'm a teacher, so I always want to call people's names to get their suggestions first. So that's why I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to wait for anyone else first to uh, see if they want to address that question because I'm a talker. If you do have ideas, I'd be down to hear them. It might help me mm -hmm. brainstorm. Yeah, I was saying I don't have uh, like nothing. I'm not but like I'm saying like there's nothing necessarily that's um, I don't have any uh, grand ideas. I just uh, you know we are uh, I don't know. I kind of like to hear from Omar and Darlene just because we are we're female driven. You know that this is a very kind of like. You know, you're 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 kind of alone with Matt here, <laughs> and so I don't want to be the voice in the room all the time. I think that all voices are valid, and I um I don't necessarily it's the teacher in me. I'm always calling on people that are quiet because I just think that that there's more valuable voices sometimes than my own, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so, you know, um. Cool. I'm happy to share. I don't have a, like you said, I don't have a specific idea, <clears throat> but Eileen, I do agree. I think the, like the performative stuff I think is great, especially like not great. It's for children. Sometimes I think Carla, you mentioned that that is important for them to see, but I also, I'm wondering if this is an opportunity to engage, like, um, for example, like do the survey that we're going to send out. Like, like, can, are there any things like that, like tangible things that we, want um that can coincide with with the stand um and that the survey is only i can think of off the top of my head but i'm sure there are more and maybe there are other whether maybe the council has something that they can um suggest but that was the first thing i thought of too 
I was like, is there a, um, uh, if timing wise, if, if uh, having a way to do the survey, um, I don't know the limitations of uh, budgets in the city of Evanston. I don't know what devices people have available um, for these things. So I guess Matt, out if you can chime in, if you hear something and I'm like, yeah, it's not possible. Um, but even uh, if the if during the budget during this time during this, I'm sorry, not the budget during the survey during this time, is possible. Uh, on like different devices. I don't know who would do that necessarily. I don't know if that would be us or if that'd be other people that, 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 that do that or volunteers that do that. Um, we, but that we, could be a way as far as having the survey on some type of on some type of tablets where people could fill it out then um, uh, or have a QR code. So I want that, uh, yeah, that's an, act, ex, I, I'm, that's an excellent way to do it too. They can do it on their phone via QR code. Um, and I also uh, really like the idea of asking different departments to take an hour or two. Again, I don't know what budget restrictions are and whether not if uh, if we are the only, you know, equity group that they look to. If they have other kind of like we have in-house people that we partner with prior to events, so we know like ASCD has equity things that so we can go and have, call them in to do. PD workshops for two hours. Um, I don't know if the city has vendors that they have already kind of in their books that they can go to and ask that, or if I know just kind of piggybacking on um, what you said in the past, like it's not our work. So like, I don't, even though I do that work, I'm not volunteering myself to go do that work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Like, well, the um, city should do, whoever does yeah, it, you know what I mean? Say. <laughs> So yeah, so that's why I sound hesitant in my words because I was like, that's what I do, but I don't, I'm not volunteering myself to do that because we kind of need the city to take ownership of it. Um, so I don't know. And I do have a question though. Um, what does, I mean, um, you, you say uh, the white, the, um, you guys have the, the stand where you guys are outside and you're standing, what other um, kind of activities are planned during that duration of time, like what in um, the past, what in the mean, past? Because I mean haven't when, participated in. You mean ahead. when people are standing outside? Yeah, yeah, but, you know, or even just so you have you have a speaker that's going to be at noon. Um, you do the stand outside, so I just kind of need for for context, like just what what other things are typically planned during that time frame on the, on that day. Um, so uh, on that day, we. Um, we encourage part of the, part of the standing outside is um, is saying a, a, taking a pledge that we share with all of the groups and on the same sheet where we share the the pledge, which we often just put on the back of signs that you know people make. There's also some questions um, that we encourage the people that are standing there to engage in conversation around some questions. Mm -hmm. um, and I hadn't thought of this, which I should have, I hadn't thought to say, oh, what are some particular questions you'd, if there's something you'd like us to get people talking about. But we do, we try to get, um, once we know a group is gonna be outside, we try to get a couple of people from each group to be kind of nudging the conversations. Um, and we also sometimes if people, if an organization says, yeah, give, give us some help with that, we can we can send a staff person to be standing out in front of the Civic Center if, if city employees were gonna, we're going to be outside and need, need some help having those conversations, which, you know, they might. Um, uh, and it just, it occurs to me, Carla, when you were saying, uh, uh, figure out something that the different departments could do, if, you know, if, if the, if there's not money in the budget to pay for people to come and do professional development, perhaps the people could be encouraged to eat their lunch at 1130 instead of 12 and then uh, engage, engage as a group with the, um, with the, the conversation speaker. with Loretta Ross and have an opportunity to do some, some conversation together as a department um, around that because there, there are some simple questions that I'm sure that I know will be embedded in that, in that um, talk about, you know, what, what does this mean for, where, for you where you're sitting right now? What's, what does being holding yourselves accountable mean in your setting? And 
that would be a really interesting conversation for various departments to be having um, amongst themselves and not necessarily with everybody in the city in the same place um, watching it. Um, we also, different organizations also provide um, different activities. So we'll, the Saturday before that, we kind of do a whole week of things. The Saturday before that, there'll be a, um, a conversation led by YWCA at the Block Museum at the exhibit of uh, Site of Struggle. The week before, we're gonna do something at the Evanston Public Library with the exhibit that they're gonna have about the bias among us, the bias within us, that is a traveling exhibit from the Smithsonian that's gonna be at the Evanston Public Library. So we'll advertise all of these different options um, that people can participate in. We generally, they're usually everybody that's doing something, it's being done free so that there's not any charge connected with it. Um, well, okay, so weather permitting, because it's April and apparently right. it's snowing today. <laughs> so we may have a blizzard on April 28th. <laughs> um, but weather, so if, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if I'm asking a lot of questions because I, it's tried, okay. um, I haven't had an opportunity during these times. I'm I'm typically at my office, so I can't hop out. So, um, uh, but so after the after the the walk or the stand, um, what have you, and everyone's doing the pledge, is there then the opportunity for talk circles? And I'm asking, for example, um, it would you wouldn't necessarily you would need volunteers to be. Uh, low-key referees or maintainers of the norm in the conversations, but uh, the, what popped in my head was an opportunity for uh, uh, maybe some some big inquiry questions around um, a, around transformative actions, like you know how do, the the question as far as like how do we take our you know things that are performative and make them actionable, right? So mm -hmm. if there, if you know, there was a generation of some kind of big theme inquiry questions, you know, kind of self-reflective questions, and then a breakout into just kind of talk circles where someone is, you know, leading that. I don't know if you walked around. I guess this is teacher me. You walk <laughs> each it, it, so thirty it's, thirty year educator here. There you so go. You so you understand. Have, so yeah, you don't okay, have to so keep apologizing for being okay. a teacher. <laughs> so in in my in my mind's eye, what I see is some type of uh, even if like the different questions were on different colored index cards, and you handed out the question, and people met together in in that colored group, and they were to meet. You know, what I'm saying you know. The reds are answering this question, the blues are answering this question or discussing this question, not answering it. And then they work together to spend a few, you know, to spend some time uh, uh, addressing that question as a group, again, with someone uh, with someone as the, the low key referee in case someone gets out of, you know, these topics can be a little top, you know, rough at times. So, um, just to have a more focused talk circle instead of everyone kind of waxing poetic about the things that they think sound great. Mm -hmm. Let's, you know, okay, so then if this is my question, this is what I plan to do, this is what I've done, this, this is this is my uh, this is a challenge for me doing that, this is what I'm uncomfortable with, yada yada yada. And then um, having that be like, like I said, a guide for the talk circles. Um, you know, you, you've heard of zig uh, uh, the zigsaw, right? As you were in educating, you know, because it, it could be a situation where if I came with my family and there was, you know, I have high schoolers, if I came with my family and there was five of us, potentially all five of us could get a different colored card. And then that would then stir conversation once you got home, because each one of you all would have discussed something different. Mm -hmm. you know. Shutting down. Um, I, I like what you're saying. Um, this year in particular, we have no sense of how much participation there'll be because it's the yeah. first time back out doing things in public. Um, and so I, I don't know uh, if, you know, hope, if, if, there's, if there's a group somewhere, then yes, we definitely want that to be what's, what happens. And we do, we do create questions so that people will talk. What, what we would love then for the people in those different um, conversations to share back with us some of the some mm -hmm. of what came up for them 
but also we hope that they'll go back inside their offices or schools or businesses and say, we got to keep this conversation going. That was kind of important what we said. I mean, that's, we want this to be part of just the ongoing conversation and normalize the expectation that we're all supposed to be working for the transformation of our society, uh, which is not necessarily what people always think they need to be working on. Yeah. So yeah, I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Sorry, I was muted. I'd like to kind of hold on to the survey and the timing of the survey as a discussion as it relates to this, because the next thing, even if it's not on there, the next thing I was planning on discussing is the survey. Um, and so let's, I, I don't wanna lose that suggestion in here, but I wanna kind of take it into the full discussion of the survey. Um, so we can kind of talk about timing because like, for instance, Eileen, you said there were other things you were doing in the week before. And I almost feel like that's an opportunity where people are gathering with equity related things in mind. And those are great opportunities to get the survey filled out. So should we be, you know, like I'm trying to weigh that, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, once you have your, I'll, st I'll stay for the conversation about the survey and yeah. see it. And we would be very open to making sure that it was available to people at any of the events that we're connected with around this and, and continuing after that. But certainly a concentrate, I have no idea what your timing is on when you want to roll it out and when you want to get it back. But if we can be helpful, I know that's, you know, the more the, the better in terms of gathering responses. Okay. And so I still don't have, I mean, we, we don't meet again before this date. So if we are thinking, so hold a survey for right now, are we thinking, going to say it. Are we thinking that if we put this ask, given the fact that the city employees have had little to no training around these issues, I mean, like sometimes it's more damaging to randomly tell people to go out there and talk about racial equity with mm -hmm. no training. Right. So it's the poor you know, BIPOC person sitting in the room and these people are like, well, if us to talk about this, so let's go. And yeah. then, it, you know, like, could we cause more harm than good? I get, you know, in our, in our attempts to like create some action. Absolutely. Um, without, without skilled facilitators around, it's hard to keep things um, moving in directions that don't put the weight of it on the BIPOC folks who are standing there. Um, and so that's a really important consideration um, in terms of having big, long conversations. Um, good, good point, good point. So maybe we kind of say when maybe in a future, in a future space when we are our collective better selves <laughs> as a city employee group, um, that maybe that will be it. And then let's talk about um, then the survey. Um, as a whole, and then try to kind of connect it back to this. So, um, sorry, the survey has been complete. The survey has been translated. Um, I was, I owed Matt an uh, action item that I will admit I was behind on, <laughs> but um, he now has it, which is the snippet of um, what is to be communicated um, along with the survey. Uh, Matt, in all fairness, I wrote this and how I show up around equity and how the older person, a older person, any given one, um, not picking names. I mean, I could pick names. I have picked names in the past, but like, hey, um, you know, a older person or the mayor or whatever may choose to send it out what they may feel comfortable seeing are two different things. At the end of the day, like in what I sent and I am going to... Um, share my screen it's it's short um but I, I think it's important that we read it as a group because um see i almost did the wrong thing there share um we see it as a group because um ultimately this is the first piece of marketing for the survey if a community member reads this and is like that's a bunch of malarkey. 
um, like we, this is ultimately what makes them click, right? Um, again, and, and we will talk about the other ways we plan on sending this out and not just via email shortly, but um, for those who are getting it via email, um, so I'm gonna be quiet. Well, actually, I'll just read it out loud. It's better to put it in the space. The Equity and Empowerment Commission um, of Evanston is pleased to roll out Evanston's first ever racial equity community survey. It is true that you can't improve what you don't measure. So this effort aims to take a baseline pulse of members of our community. We would like to hear from the community about their lived experiences of existing in, with racialized identities in Evanston. This effort will also aid in understanding the areas in which the city of Evanston needs to focus its equity efforts and help prioritize those efforts based on community response. Equity in practice is not a final destination, but a perpetual journey. If we understand that, the action taken in, if we understand that the action taken in putting forth this survey uh, is not in itself action of change, it is simply a tool to help drive Evanston forward. Sorry, I need to change something there. Um, I'll just highlight that. Um, but ultimately, what I'm trying to say is that we want to make sure that we are not putting forward this survey as like an equity action, but it is simply. Um, a tool in trying to assess where we are at and hopefully to be able to use, use to use to hold Evanston accountable. Um, we also understand that asking our community to respond to this survey on issues of racial equity when the city's past and present actions on this issue may not inspire confidence and in change is a big ask, but we have to start somewhere. This, uh, this is your opportunity to voice your concerns and priorities. And then we have both a baseline and equity assess a baseline equity assessment and community voice prioritized hmm, prioritization. Sorry, uh, to hold the city of Evanston accountable. It is our goal to track not simply actions but how those actions are being felt and experienced by the community by carrying out an equity survey every two years. Please consider adding your voice to the community collective on this issue. Anyone who has questions about the survey can feel free to contact co-chairs and there are names. Um, I'll fix those two things. Um, I guess my goal was to communicate one, I mean, my sense slash experience has taught me that in organizations, again, I have never done this at a citywide level, but in organizations, when uh, employees or members of an organization see these things coming, they're like, this is just BS. They never do anything. We filled out one of these for the past, you know, like they send out one of these every five years, nothing ever changes and nobody's motivated. Um, and so part of my goal was to one, recognize that this in itself is not an equity you know, action. This is not this in itself. This survey is not changing anybody's life. Um, but that we have right now, we're not measuring how we are, how people are experiencing um, living here in Evanston. And we have to start getting a baseline somewhere um, and trying to communicate that. I I I'm also very, it is, it is kind of wordy, but I'm also concerned about not over promising. Because the reality, as we have discussed in the past, is that we, as this commission, don't actually have um, the power to mandate the, the priorities that come out of this. We don't have the power to make any of these things happen, per se. Um, and so I want to stress the piece there that the most, I mean, like the, the thing I'm promising is to have it as an accountability, a baseline and accountability tool. So I guess I'll start with that. You guys tell me. Um, what are the big, like if you're reading this for the first time or a citizen was reading this, what are the big things are we missing in communicating? And do you think the things that I focused on are right?
Um, I had a couple of questions. My one of my questions was about language barrier, but not dealing with that's a separate question, not dealing with translation, but dealing with lack of understanding of certain terms. Like, do they know what do will people rightly know what like racialized identities are? Like, you know, because it's not like it's a term that I use regularly, but like, will they know what that means? Um, um, so that was one of the first things that that kind of stood out to me is maybe we have to put like a little carrot or something at the bottom um, defining it or, yeah. Yep, that's a good point. I, I highlighted it so we can, I can address it later. Anyone else? It, it, I think you hit the right tone. I think it sounds really good. I, I am definitely cognizant of the not wanting to overpromise, but I wonder if at the end we could say something again, you know, given everything you say in the last paragraph, that being said, we are committed to basically pushing the city and holding a, a, uh, holding the city accountable so even though we can't overpromise, we can state that as a commission, we're going to try. Um, something just occurred to me on, in that vein, um, just because I use the word accountable twice already, maybe that um, as a commission, we are committed to using this tool to elevate um, the needs, the voice, the, I don't want to use voice again, but um, the uh, I'm not sure what we're elevating. Elevate the. I would. Urgency. I would. I would just say priorities um, of the people of Evanston. Um, could be an option. Or needs. Like I yeah. think needs. Um. I would say I would so I, I've been kind of hopping on to different like cities uh, websites and just kind of looking at um comparing like how they are presenting similar things to their cities and the one thing that I did notice, and it, it dawned on me today, because I was I was making uh, promos for a for a PD, it dawned on me today that when you, you just said like it's 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 kind of wordy. Mm -hmm. My my every like I, I don't know I guess I'm I can't I'm I'm not being I'm not visualizing it attached to the the entire survey right now. Um, just looking at it in paragraph form, I feel like if if we're not overpromising, like like short, we have our paragraph and then like we want you to do this to end this, and then getting it down to maybe some bullet points that this that this survey is going to do, because bullet points are chunkable and digestible. Okay, um, I think. I mean, I have several we understand questions here. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, and so actually, let me do this just for, um, so I have an original. Um, we can say we understand here and put bullet points here. To your, you know, like to your point of like, um, it's like we want we, we want them to we are we are doing we are asking this 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 and this and then that ask will result in this 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 and this yeah and i'll get to the uh the, the uh, survey <laughs> you know because um, yeah. you know. if i have a i don't know what in a, um if i have a language as in if i have a literacy issue if i have a language issue mm -hmm. 
I would I think I would be a little intimidated. Yeah, and so, but and again, I'm not gonna fully wordsmith it here. I'm just trying to get right. to the point of um, we understand these things, um, but it is our goal or something to that effect. And then I can find a way to put these two things. It's not perfect right now, but you know, word them so that like it is our goal to provide an opportunity or whatever. Um, Sorry. An opportunity for you. Um, and then I'll figure, figure that out too, wording wise. And if maybe just, you, so you're thinking it's not so much just about shortening it, but breaking it up so it's not as one thick paragraph is, is I mean, yeah, I think, yeah, think I think the effect be enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know if it, cause I just, when I read it earlier, I was like, oh yeah, no, no, this is great. And then now when you ask the question, like, what do we think? I was like, well, maybe it is intimidating because it is, you know, like, you know, the survey has these questions, has a lot of questions, but we do need the background. So I'm, I'm, so I'm processing out loud. So please excuse me. <laughs> so please, yeah. please excuse me. Um, yeah, because I just, I, I like the, I like the structure now. Like we understand this, this is our goal, and by doing, by filling out the survey, you will help us do this. Like the, these yeah. are, these are our actionable yeah. items once you receive the yeah. survey. And I'll figure out how to add that out there. So that makes sense. Are there any other um, points that we need to make about the survey, about why it's important, about what we need from them? Um, the reality is most people have no idea who the hell we are. Um, most times we don't know who we are. Um, so I think there is this, I did kind of go back and forth of like, this is the EEC commission. Um, yet I speak about the city of Evanston. I, I don't know if it matters that we are like this volunteer group versus not part of the city, um, which does it appear to be coming from the city, which eh, whatever, um, that might hold air, butts the fire a little more, but, um, so that was the other piece I was processing. So we like roughly comfortable with the sentiments being, I mean, it needs to be fixed up a little bit, but the sentiments being communicated. Is that what I'm getting from the silence? I, I think, um, Carla, um, a lot of people, a lot of different um, groups that I talk to, the um, fraternities, sororities, whatever, and people, you know, are just, you know, kind of concerned that, you know, they do a lot of surveys here in Evanston and, you know, they never hear the results of it. And um, yeah, thank you. I know, you know, and so, you know, making sure that, you know, we, I mean, you know, get some sort of, res, you know, results out to the community. And um, I mean, like you said, we don't have the power to change policies or anything like that. But I think that um, even if we could, you know, put forth some initiatives that, you know, would make some changes for people. I mean, because that's what people are looking for, and not just, you know, obviously not simply just to do a survey, but to see that, you know, we're working on some of the things that come out of the survey. All right, those are two good points. Um, uh, yeah, so one, um, I think it's very important that we commit, because we can do that, we commit to sharing the results, we're going to be the ones um, with, you know, gathering results and responsible for the report. So that we can do, um, we, that, that, that's a commitment we can make because it depends on us and not some outside party. Um, and then I do like the idea of trying to, and I think here I talk about accountability twice, maybe the second time I, I find a way to weave in there that, I mean, because what we are capable of doing, which is the whole point of this, like while we say we can't change policy, the city's eyes are not, you know, focused on this and our eyes should be focused on it. So if things come up from this survey, 
um, the whole hope is that we, we're, we're choosing a few of them to then put forward some sort of policy around. And so um, particularly, and we outline goals around housing. So um, maybe I can find a way to quickly say that in a sentence um, so that, that that is a commitment. Again, we can commit to creating um, the proposed, you know, the proposed changes. We can't commit to passing it, but we can do that. So I think those are two good things. Um, I wrote down a couple of questions. I was just wondering about, because of well, since we said that every, everyone's good with the sentiment that's on here so far, right? So we're that, that I didn't want to step on any, any of that real quick before I went to my questions. Um, so then my questions are about translations. Um, do will we, uh, but not just translations, uh, but also something for sight impaired people. Um, is there a is there a way to have um, um, a, some you know some type of either large print or um, sa uh, sound button or some you know I mean I could read it and record it over you know what I mean? but there's some way to do that. Into, that's built into Google now. Meaning like I mean you get your email you can blow it up as big as you want to see it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. now Google um, Gmail has you can click a button. Oh, and read it for you? Email to you. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't know that. <laughs> that is awesome. Okay. I just uh, recently noticed it in the last few months in Google. Okay. So, Coming yeah. So, that, um, I, I already asked the question about the what kind of language barrier as in vocabulary related. Mm -hmm. And then, um, again, me hopping around from different city municipalities the last week or so, um, we eat with our eyes. And so I, you know, and you're more likely to fill out a survey um, or, to, you know, to do that type of work if, if it's visually, you know, gonna be popping or what have you. And, and the Evanston City uh, website, I'm sorry, Evanston, but it's boring, <laughs> you know. Um, every other city's website that had, every other city that I went to that had something around, that had a commission on equity, everything was, um, you know, you click here, everything was brightly colored and it was, you could tell the audience was the people and not a fellow councilman. You know what I mean? Like no regular person wants to read an ordinance. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, I mean, maybe, maybe you do, Carla, you're in, you're in, in your doctor, maybe you love reading ordinances, but, you know, so I was just wondering what is the method? Because uh, it kind of, is there a place for us to have some type of hook visuals or a hook like even a web page where the stuff that we're reporting out? This is where you can go and find the survey. This is where you can go find results of this. This is the go where you go. I mean, I know we have the city of Evanston, but it literally is not the city of Evanston website around these commissions is not built for. It's not built for an audience that's outside of like the political realm. I don't think. You know, I can click on minutes, and click on the recordings of these, but it's really, it's humdrum when it comes to it. And we want to engage people. We have to start, we have to start there with the, the hook and the visuals to get them engaged. It may sound weird, but that's how we get our kids engaged too. So I don't know. Matt, that's almost a question for you or it's like towards you. I don't know, like, but if, if we were to provide this and even some of the graphics or whatever, is there a person internally who puts things on? Yeah, um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I don't think that they're going to um, redo the website in any way, but there is. No, I don't mean the whole website, right? But the, you that's should all. pick somewhere. Somewhere on the website, yeah. it should say, oh, please fill out our equity survey. Yeah, or, yeah that's um, In the month of May and whatever, we're doing the equity survey. So they mm -hmm. should click and it has to go to some page. Yeah. Um, and so. Yeah, I think um, I've seen things like that, I guess, um, particularly around the budget. Um, if you want to look at the budget, you can click on a link and it takes you to a uh, different web page um, that has all these drop down tabs and is easy to navigate. Um, so I so think there, I think having something like that would be possible to um, have the equity survey link on the web page. And I mean, I think if the equity survey link is on the web page, um, Lashandra has talked about like you lose 
engagement every time that you have to click on anything more. Um, mm -hmm. So I think if we have it on the front page or on a page of the city website, I think having it go straight to the um, the survey survey would be a good idea. Yeah. And I haven't played with um, Survey Monkey. Um, I don't know if has anybody played with Survey Monkey. Does anybody know? I mean, short of changing your color, which any of these things can do. Actually, I have played with Survey Monkey. Um, you can change the color, you can change the text, but I don't think you could jazz it up a whole lot. Yeah, no, I, I, I think uh, so. Surveys are just you know, surveys are surveys. They're gonna be as you know benign as they are. That's that's how I'm talking. I think I'm talking about as as a as a whole. Like we we've mentioned most, like we've mentioned even with you know the the stand against racism. Like we don't know, you know, you know you don't know how many people are gonna be engaged on that particular day because it's COVID. And what I'm learning from the other, the other, my other kind of dealings out here with kind of post COVID reality or what have you is that engagement across the board on most things is very, very low, right? And, and you know, you do eat with your eyes. It doesn't matter whether or not we're shopping for our own individual clothes, we're shopping for food, or we're doing surveys, we eat with our eyes. And so I'm looking at, I'm, I looked at Chicago, I looked at um, um, uh, a couple of cities in, in California, I looked at a couple of cities down south, and their equity, if we click on the commission page, that's the straight city, you know, kind of just like the humdrum of the city, when you click on the page that has to deal with anything equity, it's like you've gone into this much more engaging and um, engaging environment that pulls you in and makes you want to see what's happening next around the issues of equity. You know, and they have it broken down into the different ones. I, I don't, I'm not asking if the city would change its whole, its, oh, it's, its home website, but I'm wondering whether or not we can have, you know, if we can have a page that is dedicated, you know, I don't, I don't know which, I don't know what process the city, I mean, what, uh, uh, I can't think of the name right now, like WordPress, GoDaddy, whatever. I don't know what they, I don't know what their thing is that they, that they use, but I just, I, you know, speak yeah. to like, okay, people, pe people, it's sore, you know, people want to see what the outcomes are. People want to have, like, where do I go as a regular person to see what's going on with equity? And then it just, what, and when I get there, am I going to be encouraged or drawn in to join it, to be, okay. to become so engaged? The, that's somewhat of a larger question than this. So, like, no, so my, my, yeah, let's I just know. go and ask if, let's just say, if we had we had interest in putting forth more on the equity commission page, like if mm -hmm. that's a possibility, um, and I'll. So then, Matt, the next question here is: Can you liaison with? the mayor, I guess I can yeah. send them an email too, but like if we can have this cleaned up within the next day or two, um, now we have the question of when to roll it out. So I want to make sure from his, there, his perspective, he's not like, oh, we're about to announce the budget and I don't want to do it at the same time. Like, I, I don't, I'm just making something up, right? I, I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on, but that there's no reason that they couldn't roll this out. Um, like whenever we think it's wisest in the next, you know, short window, because everything's ready to go as soon as, you know, this little thing is cleaned up um, because, but, but I don't want us to start doing our end, which is the next thing we're going to talk about until it's been officially quote unquote launched by someone official. Mm -hmm. um, right. And so I want like the, all the folks and the mayor to send it out through whatever chat, like through the email channels, mm -hmm. and then we can start then piggybacking on that to send out our communications. So if you could just make sure there's no issues there. Yeah. Um, and um, so back to the, the thing of timing. When we originally talked about rolling this out last year, we were hoping we could catch the end of summer um, in our rollout, which is to say how behind we are, but it is what it is. Um, and we were hoping that part of that rollout would include hitting some of the park districty type events. So whether that's movie in the park or they having a jazz band playing or whatever um, to get the people who don't respond to emails 
or not respond to or even check emails on a regular basis are not sitting at their desk um, all day who are less likely to fill it out to capture some of those folks. I think what Darlene said earlier is the way I'm seeing it done, be done all, all the time. It's not a matter of nobody's really showing up with iPads or whatever anymore. You show up with QR codes, where mm -hmm. either cut out so you can people can like grab a cutout. You can tell them what it is, grab a cutout, and they can scan it once they're sitting at there wherever. Or you just have like flyers all around you, so they scan it and then they they walk and then but the web page comes up on their um, phone and they can fill it out that way. Um, so if if we want to do that. Is there like then, uh, is there a benefit to maybe actually rolling it out um, in like in tandem with um, the stand against racism at the end of April? And then that puts, when does the, when does the stuff start? Is it only summer after school is ended in June? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't pay attention. Like when does stuff start happening at the parks? Is it after Memorial Day? Matt, do you have a calendar of events that would even give us a ballpark of, and what I'm trying to figure out here is if it's, if it doesn't start till June, June, July, when kids are out of school, then I don't know that we want to delay that long. But if waiting a month would have us, you know, be able to kind of capture some of that, that it might be worth waiting, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm looking at the um, city calendar right now, and it looks like um, most of the events right now are, are still like the typical meetings on the calendar um even through um june like there are some other events um and i don't have the um i'm not sure if all of the parks department events are on the um, city calendar um okay um i don't know thoughts yes thoughts on that and we may end up using we i was asked originally how long i want to run this for and I can, my pushback here is that I don't want to limit it by some arbitrary timeline because with built into the survey are demographics and we are making this commitment to make sure we hear from all of those demographics, which may mean our latter, our latter actions around the survey and gathering responses is going to be targeted um, because we didn't hear from X population. Um, or X ward or what, you know, like what, what we, we we're taking um, demographics in all sorts of ways. And so um, maybe we go ahead and get started um, and then we maybe utilize those, you know, certain events or whatever to kind of target to populations we aren't getting, but at least it'll get the ball rolling. Um, and then back to the original question of um, the timing with the anti-racism, the stand against uh, racism. I went out of my way in this introduction to kind of say, we know that this in itself is not an action, right? Like it's a measurement tool. Um, but then also Eileen is saying like, this is a day we want to take action. <laughs> so um, is that too much of a disconnect or is it just fine and it's all in my head because I'm thinking too deeply about it or what? You said it was a start. Yeah, I mean, right? I mean, that's what it is. You said it was, it, no, this is, it's a start. It's not, it, it isn't quite an action. I mean, it's not actionable. I mean, or is it? it I don't know. It's a start. They have, we have to survey the, it's like a needs assessment first. You have to kind of do some self-reflecting and when you start anything. So it's a start, right? Yeah. <laughs> So are we good with targeting? What's your exact date, Eileen? Uh, April April 28th is the date of this, the physical stand and the lunchtime program. And then um, Matt, I guess the question there becomes, does the mayor 
there. He just send out stuff whenever he feels like it. I mean, I guess he does, right? Like he just addresses random stuff. Um, not so much random, but like whenever, you know, whenever it needs addressing. Is he looking to put this in a monthly um, communication or is it going to get its own communication? If it's going to get its own, then we could pick a date. Um, yeah, I can, I can talk to the mayor about that. Um, yeah. And my initial impression was that this survey would go out with um, the mayor's newsletter and the um, all their, the council members' newsletters. Um, and, but it, um, he may want to send it out as its own communication. So if you can find out about that and email me and Rashandra directly, because we'd have to talk about this before the 31st, but let's, I mean, sorry, before the 28th. Yeah. But let's go ahead and just, you know, it's as good as day as any. Uh, um, and at least we can tie it to other, you know, tie it to this initiative um, and act in unison. And the, that will be the plan. Um, so we, go ahead. I just wanted. No, I, I, I thought I, I know that the the stand is on the twenty eighth. But I, did you mention that there was stuff happening before that? Um, like the yes. big events, the twenty eighth. But there's uh, so are we aiming for the big event, or are we going to try to aim at the smaller events too that are all associated with the stand against racism? Um, because when when does the when is the oh because that, that that's the culminating event, right? Right. So there's um, the, the thing that's going to happen at the pub, at the Emerson Public Library is the week before April 20th. And there's something at the Black Museum on the 23rd. Those would be places that we could, you know, post. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to ask that if we were aiming for just the culminating event, if we were going to start with the, the whole week of Stand Against Racism and go to like, you know, and have to do it at the Black, the, you know, the museums or whatever. I'm going to stop here for a second so I could look at a calendar. Um, yeah, I mean, what, the 28th is a, wait, 28th is a Thursday? A Thursday. Yeah, I mean, there's, I'm looking at the week before the 20th, before the first event, and that gets us into, I mean, I don't know that it matters. I'm not very religious, but um, Good Friday, Passover, Easter, um, Easter. I mean, just, I don't, I don't think we want to like release it yeah. while everybody's doing whatever things around their holidays. Um, so we could look at, you know, doing it on that 19th. Um, so then it can be shared on the 20th. And the twenty third, and the twenty eighth, and the other days. Mm -hmm. So, when is all right. Easter is the seven. Easter is the seventeenth. Okay, and when is when is Passover? The fifteenth. Okay, good, yeah, all right. good Friday. Okay. 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 All right. Um, so let's just call it at April nineteenth, unless anybody has any, you know, major anything. Um, Matt, I am committing to cleaning this up, making sure Lashandra um puts her eyes on it and then sending you a, a clean copy um i would like to say a special thank you to darlene on the next issue i'm going to discuss which is the fact that we have um, darlene has been in our um excel spreadsheet which i didn't have the link last time so i'm going to drop it in there now and i have i still have anybody. some more stuff to add to it also so good um i'm gonna sorry let me just pull the link up now but we have something like 70 organizations, groups, et cetera. Not all of them have email addresses, but some of them are easy enough for me to just find online. So I'm less concerned about the email address or contact unless it's some like, you know, super underground, you gotta be in the know thing. Um, you know, if it's a church or something, I could always just find contacts. Um, sorry, I'm trying to talk and find this link. I am sharing the link in the chat now. If anybody has not seen this, um, you don't have to work on it right this minute. Um, I won't. I won't actually be pulling from it. You know, probably for another couple of weeks anyway. Um, but we made a commitment that this is not just going to be an emailed survey. It is going to be a survey that um, where we are trying to find other paths to getting it out. And so 
we are asked, we have identified um, large groups um, that we want to make sure that we find channels to reach. Um, those groups are sometimes by race, um, sometimes by age, so the senior population, the youth population. Um, um, uh, what else did we put in here? Small business, you know, like making sure we have small business owners in there, making sure we have representation by wards, um, by different religious denominations. So we're going to try to send it through through the church. I mean, like, yeah, we're not going to keep super track of where, but like we forget the churches in general are a good path to try to communicate things, um, assuming that equity is important to them. Um, and then we talked about library and other things. So we have a total of 70 different paths here. Um, if you think of any other group or a path to one of the groups already um, uh, already entered, please go ahead and fill it in. Um, this is a live, you know, whenever I get set to do it close to the night, you know, right shortly after the 19th, I, whatever you fill in, if you fill it in a week from now, I will see it. Um, but essentially, we will wait until the 19th. Um, we will until it's launched by the mayor. Um, and then our, the, our goal is to kind of send an email out to these groups explaining n not only why we're sort of reaching out personally, um, the fact that we would like to get these, uh, we'd like to get this, uh, we, we think that the personal ask is going to get us further than a random email in some, in some groups from, from the mayor. Um, and the ask in there is that they're filtering this through their populations in whatever way they seem best feel best. And so part of that ask, uh, part of that then in the ask is that if we need to then deliver them flyers or something like that, so that they, because they, all their folks don't, they don't want to email their congregation because email is not how their congregation operates or whatever their group, then we will kind of deliver little flyers with QR codes or whatever. But the point is we're asking them to disseminate and then we ask them what they might need from us to help disseminate it. So keep filling that out if you think of anything else, but I feel like we have a strong start with, I think it's actually 69 and not 70, but um, groups. And uh, as mentioned before, we will be tracking the demographics of who's responding. And um, I know we can check back in maybe two meetings from now and um, just kind of figure out who are we missing? Who are we not getting in, in the channels that we're taking? and then um, go back out and try to sort of target those groups again. Any questions around that? Um, so Matthew, you and, you and I and Lashandra need to be in definite communication to get this thing launched on the 19th. Um, uh, and um, maybe Eileen, I will, I'll reach out to you tomorrow. Maybe we could figure out any wording, if any. We, I don't wanna sit in wordfits, wordsmith further, mm -hmm. um, but like how we could actually make the connection to the stand against racism um, in that and then get you what you need for the 20th and the 23rd, et cetera. Like, so we could talk more about the details of like what, what would be handy. Great. All right. Um, Thank you for the time. I ask a question. Um, because to your point earlier, Carla, about the mayor's emails and communications, like, is, would it be possible to have him, like, send something out? Like, Eileen, is the, can we have him, can you ask him to send something out about the stand against racism? And then in coordination with that, can we have him include something about the survey at the same time? Like, would those be good to go together? That, that would be fine with us to do. We, we decided not to ask for a proclamation because that really felt performative. Yeah. Um, but but <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the laughter. Um, uh, but yeah, we absolutely could reach out to him to say, you know, uh, include. And, and I guess I would want to do that after Carla and I have looked at how to right. how to make a connection and in the there's a part of me that's a little bit resistant because I want the survey to be coming. I want it to be really focused that it's coming from you all um, and that it's part of your ongoing effort uh, to continue to elevate the voices that are not um, being heard. So it's a little bit tricky, but I, I trust I, that Carla and I will be good at good figuring point. out whether we yeah. should try and connect them or not. 
Yeah, and to that point of the pronouncement, like I, you know, this isn't an action. I mean, this right. is like you know, negative three step. And so I don't want it to be this grand thing with the, you know, pronouncement is a really good word, trumpeted by the mayor, like on this day we are sending this out because we stand against, like, because this is not really doing jack shit. Besides holding up a mirror, somebody said reflected recently, it's holding up a mirror, so we just see where we're at, and we ugly, like we ugly around this issue so like um I, you know i like i uh, like i don't mind the connection but i also then you add like a special email from the mayor around it and it's it starts to dress it up like more than it is um and then it feels you know like we're fully in trying to take credit for not doing jack jack yet um besides buying a calculator, which is kind of what this is. It's helping us measure, <laughs> um, you know, measure where we're at, so. Totally basic. Right. Um, hey, Matt, did we get a, did we get a newsletter? <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to, I, I keep, I'm like, my mind is going on like how that, you know, it hit a chord with how do we get it, how do we get what we're doing back out to people? So I'm just, I was just wondering, like, did we get a newsletter <laughs> too? Uh, you know, what does that look like? You know, I'm, I'm again, I got methods to get it back, get all, anything that we're doing back out to people. Cause I feel like if we get, I, we don't have the power that we do have, I think would come from the people knowing what we're attempting to do and standing behind us to do it. You know what I mean? So they won't, you know, where it's like ants can move great things, even though they're really tiny, <laughs> you know? So that's why I'm like, you know, that that was a good point. I, I don't know, was it you, Darlene, who brought it up? Like, you know, what is, what we're doing? Like, how do we get that back out to them? And, you know, so what's our options? So if you don't have an answer right now, just if you could let us know, like, what are our options for that? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll mark that down as something to look into. Um, my gut reaction is that, um, you have the option to have a newsletter, but it would be um, that it probably uh, it would be, and it, it would probably be something that you all have to um, write. Um, so yeah. That's yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so um, just trying to keep things going. We have made a little bit of progress on the um, uh, the equity tool um, kit that we kind of showed in detail last time going through, um, not quite line by line, but at least section by section. But in the interest of time, I'm going to delay that till next meeting, um, which will continue to kind of make some change, like some progress on that. Um, and hopefully by next meeting, we have something that, um, that we won't, like we'll kind of walk through it, sh it should be very first to kind of just walk through and be like, hey, big picture, this is what you're looking at. But people should be able to take a copy away. Like last time I just showed it to you, this time I was just going to show it to you. Um, take a copy away and like kind of pick it apart so that by the time it gets back at the next meeting, we're, we're getting something like that's 90% there. Um, I feel like at this point we kind of added and added <laughs> and then now it just seems like a lot. So I'm trying to figure out how we simplify versus... I don't know that we have to take it out, but it's just a whole lot of different um, toolkits that you use in different situations. And we need to find a way to clarify and make it very clear when you use what. Um, so I'm gonna, with 10 minutes left, I'm not gonna kind of cover that um, now. I am going to go to item C, um, which was a topic that came up at the end of last meeting and we kind of punted it to this meeting. I think we can kind of discuss that in the, the 12, minute we, 12 minutes we have left. Um, and this was the fact that we are putting forward this energy um, to create this equity tool, which is complex and hard and but we have no teeth to figure out whether it'll be used. And especially when to tools aren't like simplistic and when it's not just a number system, like where you're going like, oh, I give it a five, oh, I give it a three, where, where people have to write, you know, in to fill it out. Um, how do we ensure that it's used? 
And the only way to do that, again, not we per se, but the only way to do that is it, it came up to, to get the city council to take it up as a ordinance, or I, I can never remember the word, this is why I need, um, <laughs> the most person read here but take it up as an in that they have to do it um which again it means they have to choose to, to take up that ordinance um but at this point us creating it and then just like throwing it their way doesn't um doesn't mean diddly squat so um what i was hoping to do on this is to see, and I think Davin, um, all the person read, um, I think had kind of promised to help lead this, but as uh, Lashandra, Darlene and I continue to work on the toolkit itself, I was hoping that we could get another small group of no more than three people, because no more than three people can meet without triggering the need for a public meeting, um, who could start working on the ordinance. Now, all the person read has as the, the governmentees, I should call it, like the government speak and the government rules and whatever down. Um, I feel like more than anybody I know. Um, so from that perspective, you wouldn't have to be um, adept at that. Um, but the idea is like kind of brainstorming with a smaller group. What, uh, what, what, are we, what kind of promise are we going to make? When does it have to be used? What are the circumstances that triggers its use? Um, so I guess this is an ask if anyone else is interested in joining, um, all the person read already said he, he would be in it, but all, joining all the person read in sort of drafting that ordinance and, and the word ordinance might be a little much an ordinance could be as simple as two, three pages. It isn't, it's not a lengthy document or anything like that. So any clarifications, any volunteers? I'd be down to help. Okay. So what I'll do is um, reach out to you and all the person read and we'll kind of figure out a time that that small group will kind of meet and, and chew on that. Or how, I mean, sometimes the meeting, sometimes you could start a Word document, we could start putting bullet point and then kind of meet to clean it up. So it, it all um, depends. If, if I, I came in on the, and with my absence, like the last time we met, I feel like I came in on the tail end of the equity tool. Um, um, and so if, if need be, then, then that can be something that I can also work with because I had to deal with some family issues prior to. So I am fully back. <laughs> so just let me know if it's needed. I don't know if that's three or four. Yeah. No, I don't know. We still have a good bit of cleanup. We still have some cleanup to okay. do on that. Um, Especially, I think now my mind is switching to like, are there ways for, like, I feel like we have a lot of the stuff there. Mm -hmm. It's just not very user-friendly looking. <laughs> like I, I myself look at it and I'm like, yeah. So I, I want us to do some work around like how do we make it more usable? So um, I'm not gonna let go of you there yet. <laughs> All right. So then I am going to take Omar's yawn as a sign that I should ask if there's anything else anybody yeah. wants to discuss. <laughs> um, I have a quick thing um, uh -huh. on the yeah. on the tool. Um, mm -hmm. I have been working with Andy and the um, Environmental Justice Evanston folks, and they were interested in seeing if there were. They had some ideas from other cities who have incorporated environmental justice into a tool like this, and wondered if. Um, there's room for a conversation around that. I don't know where the team is at in developing it. Yeah, um, let me ask Matt a quick question. Uh, Matt, are there rules? Uh, now, Andy, you're officially on the environmental council team, right? Environmental well, council. I, I'm a member of Environmental Justice Evanston, which is a program of citizens of greener Evanston. So whatever that means. <laughs> but is that a commission? No, no. Okay, all right, good. So there's no rules I get across this meeting on. Okay, great. That's why I'm just trying to get my numbers because <clears throat> I swear if I ever get taken down off this commission, it's going to be for breaking one of those stupid ass rules, like meeting with somebody I was supposed to meet with, even though I was talking about chocolate cake. Um, uh, so uh, why don't we? So then Katie, you and I and Andy, 
can meet and we haven't crossed our three yet. Um, and we can, um, I can kind of walk through, I mean, I can send it to you and if you want to take a look before, but I think it's better to walk through, um, like, you know, walk it, walk it through. So I'll kind of set up some, um, set up a, a time so we, you can see where we're at and see what you're, you know, bringing to the table and any suggestions you have. Like it's, we are, nobody's professing to be, um, this is by far the most complicated version I've ever worked on because normally I work in spaces that kind of do one single thing. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have to have one for finance and one for housing and one for small businesses and one, like it is just kind of a monster now. But if, if you don't break it up into pieces and, and make it very clear which, like how people choose which ones, then you end up with something so generic, it doesn't mean anything. So we're, that's, that, that's kind of the balance we're trying to right now. But so it, it, it's better for me to kind of talk it through with you. So I'll set something up. Great, Carla. And, and just so it's clear, I'd be more than happy to, to meet with you, talk, go over it, share, you know, what work we have done what we might be able to offer into it. I don't have the time to get involved in any long-term project of drafting an ordinance. We have our hands full with some other things, but I, as much as I can, I'd like to contribute to your effort. <laughs> All right. Um, anybody else? I just got a real quick question. Who creates the QR codes? I can. Okay. It's lickety split. Like it's really, okay. really easy. Um, all right, what's the adjourn magic, Matt? <laughs> Here, a a motion to, yeah, motion, motion to adjourn. A motion to, uh, to uh, uh, adjourn. Second. Second all, that. Oh, third that. Aye. 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 <laughs> all right. Yes. Thank you, everyone, and thank I will you. see you in a month. Right, thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.